I've restarted this video about 12 times now because I can't figure out how to start it. Today is a very special day, uh, May 23rd, 2017. And the reason why it's special is because flashback a year ago, I posted a video called I Quit My Job. I've decided to quit. And my last day was last Friday. Wow. It was my first step toward working for myself, being self-employed, being a freelance videographer, um, which I still am now. And the last year, when I really stop and think about it, it's been pretty interesting. It's been a pretty fun ride. Um, sometimes I don't really step back and think about, you know, how that year has been, how it's been shaping up and how either successful or not successful I've been. I've kind of just been plowing straight forward and trying to stay afloat and not go broke. <laughs> And that's a big part of not having a salary and not having a boss and not having a time clock and um, you know working for yourself you have to have a certain amount of motivation to do the work and to put a lot of your socializing and a lot of your fun and your entertainment and your family on the back burner in order to make your business or whatever you do work. A lot of you who subscribe to Ed Ricker Vlogs you know me because I do a lot of drone work. Um, I also do a lot of videography work, but mainly it's the drones that get the, the, the views these days. Well, my channel was not always about that. In fact, I got my first drone in December 2016. So most of 2016, my channel had nothing to do with drones. And you look back at some of those older videos, they have 50, 60, 70 views. And I put a lot of hard work into those videos and no one just ever seemed to watch them. It was kind of interesting. But the whole idea about creating a channel and really posting regularly, the whole motivation for doing so back last year was to show the process of how someone is working at a salaried eight to five, you know, job working for someone else. Welcome to my office. Transition to working for themselves as a freelancer or a business owner. Showing that process of what it looks like and what it takes to, to work after you get home from work. To keep working in the evenings and the weekends. Well, it's a beautiful Saturday and I haven't actually been outside yet. I'm inside editing. Gotta get this edit done for the Carolina Philharmonic. It's been pending for a while. And saving up money and making sacrifices in order to get to the point where you could quit a salary job and still be okay. I'm vlogging. Hey vlogs. Gordon. So who watches these vlogs? So my first real vlog of Ed Ricker Vlogs was in February 2016. I had quit my job by May 23rd, 2016. So I had three or four months of, you know, office vlogs. I mean, you watch some of my older videos that only have a couple views. And you'll see that, yeah, I was working in an office. I had, you know, coworkers. I work right next to these people and... He's also lucky. They never come by to see me. He is so blessed to work next to us. <laughs> oh! Um, I was working as a videographer, but I was at a university. So I had a boss and I had things to do and I had to be at a place at 8 a.m. and I left at 5. So tomorrow I'm going to Raleigh um, to film Bob Seligson. He is the... CEO of the North Carolina Medical Society. Sometimes I do miss it. Sometimes I miss the camaraderie. This is my new uh, vlogging camera. Check it out, see? Isn't that great? That is awesome. Yeah. And I miss um, just almost being forced to interact with people all day. Because now I, I can go a while without seeing somebody. Unless I have a video gig, a lot of my time here is spent editing, or making YouTube videos, or you know, doing a lot alone. So I'm making this video today just as like a follow-up to that video I made one year ago today about how I quit my job. And I'm looking back now and I'm thinking about the successes and the failures that I've had in the last year. A lot of the concerns I had back one year ago were that I would lose focus, I would lose motivation, I would sleep in all day, I would not do anything, I would um, be too much concerned with you know just enjoying my free time and not really focusing on networking and promoting and, and, and making the money that I needed to, to go from month to month without going broke. 
Luckily, the last year has been relatively kind to me. Um, I did have a bit of a slump in December and January where I'm so glad that I had YouTube to work on because if I didn't have YouTube, I would have been doing absolutely nothing. January, I made a total of $930 in video gigs. Um, so that was kind of scary. <laughs> but that's also part of the reason why I was able to focus so much on YouTube was because I didn't really have any gigs, uh, freelance video gigs to, to work on. Yes, I could have spent my time networking and promoting myself and advertising, but I figured at the time working on YouTube was something I was more passionate about and I was more excited about. And I thought maybe in the long run that would benefit me more than just promoting myself to the local chamber of commerce or something. You know, you have a lot of free time. You could have a lot of free time anyway, I should say. A lot of people look at you and think, oh, Ed, you have tons of free time because you never go to the office. Well, I'm working at home and I'm doing a lot of stuff and a lot of what I do is um, off of my own initiative. So if I'm not editing, no one else is going to be editing. If I'm not answering emails, no one else is going to be answering those emails. And so there's a lot of... Um, motivation and a lot of initiative that I have to maintain um, that I'm not going to uh, frustrate or anger clients and that I'm actually able to work hard enough and show people a quality product in a way that they're actually going to refer me to their colleagues and to their friends and family and to their um, people in their circles and re recommend me as someone who does a good job because a lot of what I do is based off of word of mouth. A lot of my weddings that I shoot are based off of word of mouth through family and friends. A lot of the commercials, the, the live events, a lot of those things are, are off of what people see my end product to be and that they like what they see. Or maybe they see me in action at the event and they say, oh, that's, that's a guy that is working hard. He's sweating and he's running around. I want him on my project because he's not gonna be wasting time. That's what I'm always striving for, um, to, to be the best that I can be in whatever I'm called to do. Some of the good things about um, working for myself the last year that I've noticed, I'm more flexible. Um, if my mom needs help uh, at you know, 2 p.m. on a Wednesday, more than likely I'll be able to help her out. Um, if my friend needs me to visit for one reason or another, more than likely I'll be able to work it in somehow. A lot of my work is done at the computer, editing. So the shoots, maybe I only have one or two shoots a week and then the rest of the week is spent editing. So usually I can kind of plan things around. With that said though, one of the negatives that I've noticed is that I, I get to feeling very anxious um, when I am away from my work. If I'm just hanging out with friends, I really start to feel that tug of, I've gotta get back to it, I've gotta get back to work. And I start feeling guilty that I'm not working. Um, and I don't think that that's very healthy because a lot of times I am kind of sacrificing my own enjoyment, my own socializing, my own, my family time for what I think I should be doing. And I look at my friends and my family who do have an eight to five job or something like that. And they know they can just bank on having a free weekend and they can bank on having free evenings. And so when they are off work, they are completely off work and they're not thinking about work. Whereas me, I'm kind of stressing about work all the time. And it's very hard for me to uh, chill out and smell the roses. And I think that's probably my goal for this coming new year of working for myself is making sure that I can chill out and I can really focus more on what I need as a person and as a human being. And not always what I think I should be doing as a professional. I've also tried to help myself and to be kind to myself a little bit more too. If you noticed a couple new shirts in my wardrobe in these videos, it's because I just went shopping recently and, and that, that sounds really shallow and stupid, but for me, I had gone a really, really long time, like three or four years without going to a store to buy new clothes. And that's because every spare cent that I had was going toward new camera gear. And I realized that my car was starting to fall apart. My clothes all had holes in them. I was still living in a way that was kind of like I was in college, you know? So honestly, even though it's kind of silly, I consider it a personal success that I went clothes shopping the other day. And I consider it a personal success whenever I just go to the restaurant and I don't feel bad about spending some money on a plate at a restaurant. A big concern that I had 
uh, when I quit my job was that I would slip back into a habit of sleeping all day, staying up all night, um, you know, not really taking care of myself, eating really poorly. And I'm not going to say that I haven't occasionally slipped into that the last year, but I've been able to kind of balance it out and I haven't really seen it negatively affect my output, my production. One thing I was concerned about a year ago was um, just because of my personality type, I am kind of a loner. I'm not intentionally a loner, but I just spend a lot of time alone. And it's very easy for me to go all day without talking to anyone. Um, and I think part of why I do like to vlog and, and make videos for YouTube is because I do get to talk and I, get, I do get to talk to you guys. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you guys are my friends and I can actually, you know, move my mouth and activate my vocal cords sometimes. So that's awesome. I do feel like my socializing has gone way down though. Um, and I do feel like sometimes when I'm talking to people, uh, when I do actually get the chance to interact, I feel a little out of practice. Just speaking and you know socializing feels a little bit more awkward to me now. But I think part of that is also, going back to my other point, I, I feel kind of guilty that I'm not working. And so if I'm just socializing and small talking, I, I don't really find the use in that. I don't find satisfaction. Um, I don't feel like that's my best use of my time. Um, but that's not really that healthy, you know? And I, I, I'm constantly trying to figure out how to uh, remain human uh, and to take care of my own personal social needs. Um, just because of my personality, I can get way too wrapped up in the computer and way too wrapped up in, in this room right here. And um, that's not healthy. I think the biggest benefit that I personally have, though, is I feel good about myself. Um, I feel really good about what I'm doing and where I'm going. If you had asked me maybe two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, whatever, Ed, do you feel happy about where you are in life? And, and do you feel happy with, with how things are going and where you're headed? I probably would have said no. And that's because I always wanted to be doing something bigger. I always wanted to be working toward a goal that was bettering myself and, and something that I could be proud of and that I could say that I built. And working at the university, I was not feeling that way. And before I worked at the university, I was working at a grocery store. Um, I still was working my freelance business, but only on the side. So I still wasn't feeling that way. So now that I'm kind of broken free from that nine to five grind, and I've kind of started to form my own way of doing things, I do feel more confident and I feel more self-assured about telling people what exactly I do. And I actually think that that's kind of cool to, to, to explain to someone when they ask, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a freelance videographer and a content creator on YouTube. That just fills me with uh, satisfaction. That fills me with gladness and, and I'm proud to say that. And that is probably the best thing that I've noticed in the last year, that not just how I appear to other people, but rather how I appear to myself and how I feel on the inside and how I feel that I'm growing. Um, and that puts a smile on my face and, and that, that, kind of, uh, that kind of feels good. Now I split my time probably half and half between videography, freelance videography and YouTube. And together, it creates a really good package where I can focus on both client and community. And I really appreciate you all watching my YouTube videos. It's really something that means a lot to me to know that there are 21,000 people who have decided to hit the subscribe button. And um, that's just a really cool feeling to me. And it's also a cool feeling to know that I can continue to churn out these freelance projects that people appreciate and enough to keep referring me to um, other people, to their friends, to their family, to their colleagues. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope some of you have stuck around to the end. If you have goals and you have aspirations of your own, don't give up. Keep working toward it. If you're trying to have a channel grow on YouTube, keep working at it because it took me a year to get 300 subscribers and then it took me a week to get my first thousand. So uh, you never know where these things head and where they're going, but uh, more than likely they'll surprise you.
Keep an eye out for tomorrow's video because it's going to be another one of those sentimental videos. And if you like this one, you'll probably like that one. So stay tuned. But if all you like is drone videos, rest assured they're coming later this week as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And until next time, happy, happy living. <laughs>